So uh, how long have you been job hunting and uh, how many letters and CVs have you sent out there without much success? And do you feel like you're kind of stuck in a rut in terms of your career progression? This is the point where we say, we got you. Because on her standards today, we have an amazing guest. She is a career coach and much, much more. You'll be able to get to know more about that in a short while. Remember, this is her standards. And of course, I'm your host. My name is Queen Tambori. As usual, always excited to connect you to the right people, to empower you with the information, but also to influence the way you think. Remember, if you're one such a person that I mentioned earlier, I don't know what you're waiting for. Head on to our comment section and start typing that urgent, persistent question because we are going to try and respond to as many of them as possible by the end of this show. Uh, we are available at KTN Home across all socials, but you can also talk to me directly at Queen Tambori. We are available on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Apparently, you can also find us on TikTok. And in a short while, you'll also get to know if our guest is on social. Yes, she is on social media. I've seen her and the amazing videos that she does regarding our careers. So, without much ado, allow me to introduce Joanne, the career coach. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You look lovely. Thank you so much. And this place is amazing. So, is it your house? Is it work? Mm. Uh, so it's actually work. Um, oh, yes. I want to work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, mm. this is my production house. Oh. Um, it's where I shoot uh, most of my content, but then it's also um, hired out. So if you're, you know, a, an upcoming, um, you know, uh, someone who wants to shoot, con you know, their content, uh, because then, you know, we are living in terms where yes. content is king. King, yes. Content is king. Yeah. So, you know, you're trying to shoot... Uh, content for YouTube, for Instagram, for Facebook, for LinkedIn. Um, you know, you can come here and um, hire the space out and then do your videos uh, because then we provide uh, lights and, uh, you know, a cameraman and um, two, you know, uh, two cameras. So you're able to shoot very quality content and then just get a file. So because then you see as a content creator or even as someone in business, yeah. you don't have the time and even probably the energy to, you know, to, to hire a place and a video and edit and do all that. So you can just spare some time and come and do your bulk shoot and then release the content slowly. All under one roof. Yes. I just need to show up. You just need to show up uh -huh. and then we provide everything that you need. So do you have, a, pro you have a producer? Yes. Oh. Yes. So, so we take away that headache for, you, you know, you need to think of what I'm supposed to shoot and the quality of the content you can see. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You're making our lives easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that part of career coaching? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the side hustle of career oh. coaching. <laughs> Yes, you have to be hustlers. Have to be hustlers. Yeah, we're told every every hustle, every hustle matters. Every hustler matters. Anyway, right. <laughs> right. anyway, this is amazing and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so How much. often do you shoot content? Because I try to do a bit of following. Um, look, check, checking out the videos that you post on your socials, and yeah, it seems like you work hard. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. How often? Um, so, so very often, mm. um, because then, um, as I said earlier, we are living in times whereby content is king. Yeah. Um, so you need to go to your target audience. You need to go. To, you you literally need to go to where your clients are. Mm. You can't just sit and wait for the clients to come to you, mm. uh, which used to happen, you know, like many years ago. So I'm very intentional about creating and curating a lot of content mm. because then there are times when you don't have energy or you fall sick um so so when you can you know when you have the energy and when you have the ideas it's a it's always a very good idea to shoot the content so i do i shoot content very frequently yeah. oh. so um a lot of people only know you as joanne the career coach yes so possibly you can also unveil more about <laughs> joanne the career coach yeah all mm. right so um that's me you know that's mainly who i am that's I'm your brand coach yes that's the brand mm. um john the career coach uh, but, but my, my names are actually john mm. um yes um i have i have two i have two kids um one 
another one on the way. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, mm. thank you. Um, I love being a mom. Um, it, it's a very big part of who I am as well. Um, and yes, and, and you know, I also consider myself a businesswoman. Um, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. so when did you make the decision to become a career coach? What, what, what did it take for you to arrive at, you know, the place where you said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on career coaching? All right, so mm -hmm. it actually happened by chance. If yeah. you're, when I was um, starting off my career in corporate, mm -hmm. I knew by now I'd be, you know, like a HR director, a, a human, you know, a head of he human resources in a big company. That, yeah. was the, that was my plan, that was the goal. Yeah. Because I really love HR. I love uh, people management. I love, uh, you know, the idea of coming up with policies. I love being uh, the person who is in between employers and employees. So I love HR, and the and the part of HR I re I really love the most was recruitment. Okay. So getting candidates for the right positions, I loved it. Um, I mean, like when I'm doing any kind of uh, recruitment or you know helping a hiring manager get the right candidates. Um, completely my element, I loved it. So the plan was always to be in HR and, you know, climb up the ranks and become HR director. Um, but then now in the, you know, as I continued with my, uh, with my career, I noticed um, I'm very passionate about people because then I used to sit in interviews a lot and I could see people were making so many mistakes that were hindering them from, from you know from performing well during interviews or even uh, in, uh, people are making mistakes on their CV so it means they're not even going to call them for an interview um, and the, uh, the reason why I actually changed from you know HR to now focusing on being a career coach was there's a time I, I um, my sister needed to move yeah. jobs and so I did her CV uh, LinkedIn profile, coached her for the interview, and she was able to land a very good job. So when I when she was successful, it triggered something inside of me, and I, you know, I told myself if I, if I'm able to do this for her, I can do it for maybe two, three, four other people. Mm -hmm. And I you know did it for two people, for four people. The four people told eight people, who told sixteen people. So it became this thing. Um, so I moved from you know doing a lot of HR work to. Because then all this other work became too much, I couldn't do both, mm. and so I decided to, um, uh, you know, um, specialize on the on the career coaching aspect, which I also really really love. I love um, turning underdogs into big winners. You know, people mm -hmm. who thought they are not uh, good enough to um, land certain jobs, people who probably think they cannot be able to be, they can be paid a certain amount of money helping them and connecting them with the right kind of, you know, jobs. It gives me a lot of satisfaction. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I, any regrets so far? You know? <laughs> so you moved from employment now to, to yeah. sort of like you're now self-employed. Right. Mm. But it was very gradual. So when I, when I left um, corporate, yeah. I left corporate to become a HR consultant. Mm. So I was still doing end-to-end -end HR processes. Mm. I, I, as I said, uh, from, uh, from the beginning, I love HR. Yeah. Um, so I did a lot of you know HR consulting. So I was working very closely with, especially SMEs, in terms of setting up their HR department, doing a lot of recruitment. Because then you see, for SMEs, they their, their immediate HR need is recruitment. It's yeah. getting the right people. It's actually very hard. It's a very hard task getting the right people on your team. But then remember, any any business person. Um, you know, any SME, any large organization, you cannot go anywhere if you don't have the right people. Mm -hmm. So recruitment is at the core of any business. And many, um, especially you know, the small businesses who cannot afford a full-time HR person really struggle, mm -hmm. uh, struggle when it comes to hiring the right talent. Mm -hmm. And especially now with Gen Z. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a topic on its own. <laughs> yeah, real character development. Yes. <laughs> is happening and I know there are many SMEs who struggle with talent a yeah. lot. I, I mean they struggle with talent. So I did a lot of that. Um not until the point where I started doing the career coaching. So you know doing CVs, doing LinkedIn profiles, uh helping uh, clients with you know interview prep and you know helping them with career coaching, career mapping, you know, so that then we are coming up with a plan to know this is the direction in which you want to steer your career and this is what you need to do. So um, the reason why I, I, I now 
uh, completely specialized on the career coaching is because their work became too much more than the HR, you know, more, actually more than the HR consulting work and I had to pick one yeah. because then if you do, you know, you so have many story, masters, yeah, yeah <laughs> then, yeah, so I just decided to do this one mm. and I love it. I mean, it, it's the fire in my belly. It's like, it's, it's a thing that I can do for free. It's just that I'm lucky I get paid to do it. Oh. Right. Interesting. Are you on social social media? Yes, I am. I'm <laughs> of on course. All, <laughs> yeah. I'm on all the platforms, yeah. and it's John the Career Coach on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, and on YouTube. On, on YouTube, it's John Po. Mm. And then I'm also I have a, I also have a podcast on Spotify yeah. called Career Wise. Yeah. Yes. So there you had it. I don't know what you're still waiting for because the questions need to start coming in. Uh, be, be, from yesterday, uh, Joanne is on social and we can get in touch with her. Today we are all about career growth, career coaching, you know, moving from point A to point B. And I'm just excited that we're having this conversation right now before we make our New Year resolutions in right. two, three months. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. Yeah. Let me ask you, Joanne, mm -hmm. who needs career coaching? Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. I think we all need career coaching, whether you're employed yeah. or you're running a business mm. most of the time we don't take our careers as seriously as we do other things in our lives like health or money so, so we almost it's like you're driving a car and you, you just want the car to drive itself <laughs> <That's laughs> it. are, you, are you are you a bit <laughs> So, me, I don't talk to press. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that then there are so many cars that are running without a driver. Um, you you are, you are planning to go to Mombasa, but then now you are in Gilgil. The car does not have tires. The, the windscreen is broken. It doesn't have fuel. Like you know. Uh, so there are so many people in that situation, and I, I think also COVID did not help. Um, what happened during COVID is that most people. Uh, most people lost jobs. Most people were, you know, many, so many people were retrenched. Yeah. And then, for for others, it was a time to sit down and reflect because then you're you're spending more time with your family and you're loving it. And you know, you you're, you're trying to wonder, you know, I don't want to sit in traffic yeah. for hours. I want to spend more time with my family. Can I get work? that can give me the work-life balance because then I want to work, yes, but I want to spend more time with, with family. So there was a lot of, so many people resigned. Actually, the, the, there are these statistics that said um, there are many people who design to start businesses and, and, and you know, like those businesses are actually thriving. Mm -hmm. So it was a time for uh, reflection. And luckily now during COVID, it's, that's a time my business really grew because I think you know, people were forced to deal with things that mm -hmm. we had previously mm -hmm. ran away from. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I've found is that many people have not sat down and with themselves to ask themselves the question, which direction do I want to steer my career? What are my strengths, my skills, and my passions? What's the fire in my belly? What's the one thing, if I was to be asked, when God created you, and because God created all of us with a yeah. purpose inside yeah. of us, yeah. what is that thing? And you see, that thing should come naturally to you. It, it's something you probably studied. It's 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 the thing probably. It started off very early on when you're probably even in primary school mm -hmm. and even in high school. Mm -hmm. So even when you, when you think about the uh, things like, uh, which clubs were you in? Mm -hmm. What did you enjoy doing? Um, what can you do better than anyone else with the least amount of effort? What have you been complimented on? So that then other people have told you. So that then I'm not saying me. I love saying. And every time I sing, there are windows breaking, there are people <laughs> running away. Mm -hmm. Or I, I say I'm a very good cook yeah. and no one wants to eat my food. Yeah. So it, it must be something that other people have also complimented you on, that it comes naturally to you. Uh, that if you are to go back to school to study, you're not, it's, not, you know, it's not a struggle. Uh, because then there are many of us who also, um, many people in my inbox, all they, they want to find out is, which is the most marketable degree? <laughs> uh, which where are people hiring? And even parents, I would ask, which is the most marketable degree for my child? But that's not the right question. The mm -hmm. right question is, mm -hmm. what are your strengths, your skills, and your passions? So because we are not having that conversation, because we we, we don't believe that you can actually get paid for to do something that you, you love, know, yeah. and it's something that I advocate because you know it's not something hypothetical. It's something that I have seen happening mm -hmm. to myself and even to many other people. Yeah. Uh, money will always follow purpose. True. But then, if you um, 
if you just take a degree because it's the most marketable or you just take a degree because you got an A and if you got an A, the only things that you can do is medicine, journalism, law Me, yeah. and architecture. Yeah. So that then if you got an A and you're passionate about agriculture, mm. it's almost at a, like you, can, you cannot even tell anyone that you want to do mm. something that mm. is not, yeah. you know, mm. the medicines and all that. Mm. So that we are not having that conversation that I, I think also we have been conditioned to, to think in a certain kind of way. Yeah. Many people are finding themselves in work that is not aligned to their strengths, their skills and their passions and that's where the problem comes. Because then if you're not aligned mm. to the work, if a pandemic hits mm. and you're fired mm. or you're retrenched and you're fired, then you, you, you find yourself in a state of confusion because it's like you're, you've almost been found out. And, and, and you don't sit down and think, what can I do? And then also, we also believe that you can't get paid to, for, for, to, you know, to do what you love. Yeah. Most people don't believe that. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so so me, we all need career coaching. So that then also, when, even when you're starting a business, don't be the person who, just because all Kenyans are doing quail business, all of us, we go to quail business. Just because yep. all of us are buying things from Turkey, yes. we all want to go and buy things from Turkey. <laughs> But you see, you, so you, many people have wasted so much time and money coping mm. instead of just having that very simple conversation with yourself. Mm. So that then, even if you're selling things, are you like, what's the what's the link? Why, why are you passionate about selling the clothes? Why are you passionate about starting a butchery? Uh, there are people who you put a butchery here, it succeeds. Another person, the same place, yeah. the same butchery, yeah. nothing, nothing happens. Yeah. So, so we all of us need career coaching. And, and it's, it's an ongoing process. It's not something that you have one session and that's it. You, we are always growing because, um, you know, our environment is growing and changing. Mm. The, the way the world is in 2022 is not how it was 10 years ago. True. Yeah. Mm. So as, 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 also, as the world is changing, we also need to evolve. The way we are doing CVs five years ago is not the same way we are doing CVs today. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how frequently should we engage in career coaching and who should we talk to? For example, mm -hmm. uh, say you, you're in employment, should, is it okay for you to approach your HR people? Uh, or should you probably talk to someone, an external person? Right. Yeah. So when it comes to coaching, mm. um, I, would, I, would, um, I would advocate that it's someone, ex sorry, it's someone external. Okay. Reason being, you know, you might want to leave that organization so probably your HR <laughs> I'm manager, trying to imagine that not, conversation. Right. It might yeah. be awkward. Awkward yeah. is the right word. <laughs> um, because then when you're going for a career coaching session, number one, you're trying to find out the, the role that I'm currently doing, is it in line with my strengths, my skills and my passions? You're trying to take stock of what your key achievements have been yeah. in the past five years. Yeah. What have been some of your challenges? How have you stood out? Um, are you feeling aligned to the role? Are there any skill gaps that you currently have that you want to work on mm -hmm. in terms of technical skills mm -hmm. and softer mm -hmm. skills? Mm -hmm. um, you're also thinking, uh, is, this, is this role exerting me to the full? Because then th there are many people who have settled in roles because you're paid a certain amount of money, you're happy. It's not stretching you. Even you, you know it's not stretching mm -hmm. you. But you're not going to leave that job until you're fired. Mm -hmm. so, so it means you're operating... Uh, you're supposed to be operating at 80, but you're operating at 20 and you're happy, you know. Um, so you, you need to have, you know, uh, it, it's always good to have a career coach because then sometimes there are certain things that are happening in your career that you do, you, you're not privy to. Yeah. So the career coach is going to call mm -hmm. those things out. Um, so that regular conversation with a career coach is important. And, and then also then you can also look for a mentor as well. Yeah. Uh, but then consistently having those conversations, it's, it's the same way that... You know, people would go for counseling, yeah. whether or not you're in trouble. Mm. Um, you know, just to ensure that you are in a good place uh, mentally. Mm. So I would I would say the same thing for career coaching. Wow, oh. the questions are coming in pretty fast. <laughs> Let me just start with oh, no 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 before I get to the questions. Now, for anyone who is getting into um, who's just starting off their career life, mm. whether they are, they are they're joining the corporate world, they're getting into business, they're getting into self-employment. Normally, what would you wa want included in that career 
the starter pack, you know, there should mm. be this, there mm. should be that, yeah. Mm. Possibly you could break that down for us before right. we get to the questions, yeah. That's a very good question. Mm. Um, and, and we actually have a package called the Fresh Graduate Starter Pack. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so immediately you finish university. Mm. And, and for me, it's actually not... Um, I, I would actually advise uh, people, don't wait until you, you finish. You, you can even start be, you know you can even start when you are first year mm. but what that fresh graduate starter pack would entail is as is two types of CVs so we have two types of CVs so there's a modern CV and an ATS CV in five years ago I mean like these things were not like were not there yeah. but uh, more and more we're having organizations that because of the high number of applicants yeah a human being cannot go through a thousand CVs. Mm. So your CV is going to be vetted by a computer software before it lands the HR desk. So you need a CV that is going to pass that ATS software. That's an ATS CV. Mm. Then we have another CV called a modern CV. So that then if you ask me for my CV, I want to send you a document that is visually attractive, that is very short because many hiring managers mm -hmm. and recruiters are going to spend at most about like six seconds yeah. deciding whether they are going to continue reading your CV. So we don't have time for a CV that has 57 pages. Yeah. You know, two pages is actually enough for you to put everything. So that CV is brief, it's straight to the point, it's visually attractive, it uses infographics. And when you get that CV, you have no choice. You have to call me for an interview. Mm -hmm. That's what you know. I, I'm trying to sell. So you need to have a modern CV that is visually attractive, and this other CV that you can use in case the organization you're applying to, like the UNs and yeah, the multinationals, yeah, that yeah. would have many applicants mm -hmm. that you can use for those that purposes. Mm -hmm. So that then, if you use the ATS CV to send to a human being, it might not give you the, the desires that you want. So having a modern CV and, and an ATS CV is very important. The other thing that's important is a LinkedIn profile. There are so many of us who don't still don't have a LinkedIn profile in 2022, which is criminal. Mm. You cannot afford not to have a LinkedIn profile in 2022 because every day they're hiring managers, they're recruiters on LinkedIn trying to look for talent. Mm. So the reason why some of us have not gotten the jobs we desire, don't, are not uh, paid as much as we should, is because you are sitting on a gold mine, but no one knows about you because you do not exist. You are non-existent. Yes. Mm. Um, we are living in terms where if you not online you do not literally don't exist so if you're a professional and you do not have a LinkedIn profile you are not existing and it's one of the things you must even when you're a first year in campus you'll, you can have a LinkedIn profile that reads I'm currently pursuing psychology I'm a first year student and this is I'm passionate about psychology because of XYZ mm. you can have a CV and a LinkedIn profile even as a first year student in mm. campus um, the other thing, of course, is a cover letter. Many hiring mm -hmm. managers and recruiters are going to require that you have a cover letter. Mm -hmm. So for me, those four documents, at the bare minimum, are the ones that you should have as a fresh graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one more question before we take a break. You said that we have the ATS CV mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have the, the, modern. the modern. So yeah. if I am sending my application, which one do I, for, for a job, which one do I use? Will right. You, mm -hmm. So it depends on you, who you're selling it to. Okay. If I'm selling to you, if it's you who's asked me, mm. send me a CV, oh. there's this job, okay. I, which, which one will, you, will I send? No, then. Exactly, mm. because I know you, it's for yeah. your eyes. Mm. But if I'm uploading in a portal, mm. and I, the reason why I'm uploading is because the, those CVs are going to go through the software, then you probably want to use the ATS, ATS one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but of course, for more information about all of that, you can always follow Joanne on her <laughs> socials. And she has very... I looked at some of the packages that she offers, um, very, very affordable and of course you need to look at each one of them, figure out which one suits you and what you're looking for. We want to take a short break. I don't know if you're feeling the show the way I'm feeling it. I'm very excited that we're talking about careers and why we need to keep um, tabs with what is happening, why we need to have a healthy uh, professional life. And the person who's taking us through it is none other than Joanne, the career coach. Remember, we are available across all socials at KTN Home. You can also talk to me at Quintambori. You can talk to Joanne, the career coach. And there's one, one more person. She's called Grace Oero, who is the producer of this show. She's also available on socials. If you have any questions up to this moment, don't hesitate. Run to the comment section, type them in when we come back uh, for the second part of this show. We will tackle as many as we can. Don't step away.
Welcome back to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori, and of course we are joined by Joanne, the career coach. Today we are all about career progression, career, professional health, professional well-being, and we want to check on you. How are you faring on so far? During the first part, we ask you to send in the questions. If you have any questions, do you feel like you're stuck? Do you feel like you've been sending so many letters, cover letters and CVs? with not much uh, feedback and success, maybe you need to log in and ask your friends to come and watch the second part of the show because we want to break down as many questions as possible. Of course, with the help of uh, Joanne, the career coach. This is her standards. My name is Quinta. I'm very excited to be here. You can be part and parcel of this show by talking to us across all socials at KTN Home at Quintambori. You can uh, write to our guest directly, Joanne, the career coach. You can also talk to our producer. She's called Grace Waweru. What are you struggling with? You definitely like to know. And of course, this, uh, this show is being aired from a studio courtesy of our guest. And you can also walk in, book an appointment, and come and create your content right here. It's beautiful. I can tell you that for free. So, well, let's karibu sana. Thank you. Again, Thank you. <laughs> let's just get straight into the questions. And you can imagine, can you get the first question? Guess the first question. Uh, modern CV and ATS. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's about, um, tell me about yourself. <laughs> oh. Yes. All right. Yeah, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. Why, how do you respond to this question in an interview setting? All right. Or, yeah, do I, I, do I talk about... Uh, my career, do I talk about my family, do I talk about my aspirations, what mm. exactly should be included in that question. Mm. Mm. And before um, I answer that question, yeah. and also before I forget, we are, we are actually running an offer um, for those who are watching oh. on the Modern CV, ATS CV and cover letter. Mm -hmm. um, um, you want to go to my socials, there's, you know, there's a poster. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just thought I, I, I should put that out there. Okay. Now, when you ask the question, tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds like the person asking the question wants to know, where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. Do you like Ugali and mm -hmm. um, You know, when was the last time you traveled? It, it sounds like they really want to know about you. But most of the time, when the hiring manager is asking, tell us a little bit about yourself. What they are asking without asking is, who are you in relation to this job that you mm -hmm. are applying to? Mm -hmm. So they are really not interested in knowing where you went to nursery school mm -hmm. or that you're in a family of five or that you are the middle child or that you and your sister do not get along or that you like having Ugali and Sukawiki for breakfast. <laughs> That's not what they are asking. Who are you in relation to this job that you are applying to? So in a, as much as possible, you want to play that answer very safe because just imagine you start saying about where you grew up and maybe the, someone in the panel has a bad experience from that place. Yeah. Already the interview is over. Yeah. But then if you focus on the job, then you are significantly increasing the chances that you are going to answer this question perfectly. So talk about your education. Uh, talk about some of uh, the awards mm -hmm. uh, you have received. Talk about the certifications. Talk about your current position and your title and your key achievements. And and why 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 um, uh, do you believe you're you're a good fit for this uh, role? So you're giving the it's an introductory uh, conversation. It's an elevator pitch, and then what you want to do is remember first impressions are usually very important. The very first thing that you say during that interview is going to to set the pace for the whole interview. So remember, if you answer this question wrongly, it's going to be very hard to recover. J just the same when you meet someone for the very first time. If the first thing you smell is ile perfumia or or you meet someone for the first time and they say something and they irritate you, yeah. already it's going to take some time before they recover. But if you meet someone for the first time and they are warm and and you know they they compliment you and they invite you in, already you put them at such a high place. Even if they stepped on you, and you're like, ah, it's okay, it's okay, yeah. you know. And it's the same thing with an interview. So you want to start off the interview with a bang. If there's something that you can um, uh, avoid saying, because then it's going to to maybe um, 
put you in a negative light, avoid. So avoid any personal things. Don't say you're divorced. Don't talk about your children. Don't talk about your family. Yes, I know that sometimes yeah. the, the, the panelists are going to ask you, but don't talk about anything personal. Focus on the, you know, the, the role. Who are you in relation to this job that you're applying to? You can talk about something generally, you know, something like maybe you, you enjoy fishing or, mm. or you, you are... Um, uh, you know, like you love exercising, but you know something very generic, very it's true. But then it's something that is that you you almost cannot be faulted. Mm -hmm. You know, like for saying, don't talk about politics, don't talk about uh, you know spirituality. You know, there are people who they go for the interview and then you ask them, tell us a little bit about yourself. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I am born again and Holy Spirit filled. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. how do we proceed? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> how do we proceed? And come on, if the panel yeah. is a Muslim, I know. How, like how, how, how do, how do we proceed? So avoid, avoid areas like you know sensitive areas like politics, um, your 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 spirituality, your you know, um, you know, like, like those sensitive topics, yeah. just avoid them completely. Mm. Yeah. Wow, learning. Uh, I know we talked about, uh, you know, the ATS compliant CV, the modern CV, and CV makeover, you offer the package, but just kidogo to. Right. Uh, what, how, um, what are some of the elements that you need to include in your CV mm -hmm. and some that you need to leave out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So there's certain, uh, let me just talk about some, uh, some common mistakes that yeah. job seekers make on their CVs. And it will be something like your CV is first of all too long. I don't want no one reads a, a CV that is six pages. After page two, we are done. So it, that the CV is too long or it's too short. For some people, it's half a paragraph. Some people, it has spelling mistakes. They fa you've misspelled your name instead of curriculum vitae, curriculum vitamin. <laughs> the, the telephone number is is not correct. From the, the the first word, it's spelling mistake, or you have there's a full stop. It's starting with a small letter. It's grammatical error, syntax error. Your CV is going to be discarded. So, so that what I'm saying, the people who say, "Mimi ni CV is 500," mm -hmm. but if those 500 CVs, all of them have the title curriculum vitamin. <laughs> eh, <laughs> my friend, let let's work. I, I think the, the the whole idea is let's work smart. You'd rather send to 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 two places, yeah. but it's a good CV, and that's why it's actually a good idea to invest in a CV writer, because not all of us are gifted in True. in you know people are gifted differently. Me, I'm not gifted in maths. I cannot balance any anyone's books to save my life. I cannot like numbers just confuse me. Uh, so if if you give me something in finance or accounting, you're going to kill me completely. So, you know, I have to get someone. This, that, that's the same. There are people who are very good at what they do, honestly, but they cannot put themselves on paper. But unfortunately, before we call you for an interview, we need a CV. So there are people who are not going to see past a bad CV, even if you're very good at what, they are, uh, at what you do. And that's why I keep saying there are so many people who have not maximized their potential because no one knows about you. Or the times you've sent your CV, it's discarded, not because you're, you're a bad candidate but it's because your cv is not selling you adequately mm -hmm. so so even if you you have to pay someone there's no shame that you pay someone let them do a, a, a cv for you pay someone let them pre prep you for an interview because there are people who cannot interview well to save their lives they come in they are shaking they are sweating you ask them a question tell us a little bit about yourself already they, they are talk, they start talking about where they went to nursery school and their families and even about their faith which is not bad because then sometimes they just don't know mm -hmm. but they are probably very good candidates it's just that they don't know so it's always actually a very good idea to invest in if you can that you're, you're getting someone to help you with the cvs and even preparing for interviews um but the, the common mistakes people make on the CVs would be it's too long, it's too short, it has errors, it's not been tailored for the, spec, for the particular job, so that you have one CV. You're saying it for procurement, for marketing, for administration, for HR, surely. One CV. Mm, one cover letter. One cover letter. How can that one CV suit all the jobs that you're applying to? So also like lack of effort. Mm. Nowadays, sometimes you see job applications, someone has sent a CV, they've not even, there are no greetings, it's just an attachment with no subject. It, you just send. And every day they are saying, Mimi ni metuma. 
if it's 500 it could have mistakes you there's no body in that email maybe someone has, uh, has told you specifically attach cv and cover letter there's no cv there's no cover letter sometimes you attach a word document you see when you're sending a cv you need to pdf the document if you send it in one it's going to come to me distorted mm -hmm. already delete so there are so many sometimes our uh, hiring managers put out job openings and 1,000 people apply, but out of the 1,000, only 10 CVs can be used, which is very really sad. Yeah. yeah. Before I ask you the next question, do you think, now that uh, you are a HR um, expert, do you think it's fair to judge someone you know, for a position based on an interview, like an oral interview? Do you think that there could be better ways of assessing the capability of a candidate? Um, okay. Mm. Um, so there are, mm. and, and there they, they could be, but question is, mm. do we have the time okay. and resources? Okay. Because remember, the HR also has a boss, the, the, the business. Mm -hmm. So the business comes to me and tells me, I want five marketing executives. Now, um, I probably do not have the time to give each and every person a practical something to do and the the the, the hiring manager is telling me I want these people in two days. So what is the easiest thing? Mm -hmm. It's doing an interview. It's asking for CVs. So when you send the CVs from a hundred CVs, I get twenty. From those twenty, I'm able to get. So it's 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 not that there are probably other better ways. Okay. Uh, but then uh, people will always use what they've done before and it works. You know, they, they probably don't want to reinvent the wheel. But I do agree there are probably other better, creative, yeah. more effective ways. But when you think about uh, it's a cost issue yeah. and a time issue and an effectiveness issue, then that's why most people are usually, um, you know, uh, judged by how well they perform during an interview. During an interview. Mm. You know, close the link to that is, of course, I remember, was it so Sonko, a former governor of Nairobi, who was saying something about asking Kenya, urging Kenyans not to lie on their CV. Mm. Have you, what has been your experience with people who just, you know, uh, they just write things on their CV, false things on their CVs, and they even get the job. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then when it came, come, gets down to doing the job, then you realize there's a problem. Mm. Yeah. Ah, people lie. Oh my. <laughs> people lie all the time. I speak French. Ah, okay. Um... Bonjour. Bonjour. Sava. <laughs> Someone has no idea. And the first thing you wrote on your CV is the way you are an expert. You're, you're, you're an expert. Proficient in, in speaking French. French. Um, or, you know, you say the way you are, you, you, you have a master's and you have, you know, like you have all the skills. And then I go like, oh, okay, that's so interesting. So tell me a little bit more about the project that you did for your master's. No idea. No clue. Um, so that then sometimes the, the, when you read someone's CV and then the person who comes, you know, as a recruiter, sometimes you, you even continue asking questions because you cannot believe how, what, like, what is going on. Mm -hmm. So people lie. Uh, when, you, when we ask you about what is your payment, um, like what are you currently earning? I mean, people will go to River Road and, and, and fake or even just lie lie about their skills, lie about degrees, lie about... And it's never worth it because truth of the matter is if, if you're found in the lie, yeah. there's no recovery. Because what are you going to say? There's no recovery. So I do not urge anyone, don't lie. When they ask you something, if you're not comfortable answering, don't answer. Uh, it may reduce your chances, but don't answer. But the, the, my rule always is honesty is always the best policy. Yeah. If you're earning 50,000 and you apply for a job for 400,000 and they ask you for your pay slips, give out the 50,000 pay slips and not justify why you want to move from 50 to 400. There are many people who are currently being underpaid. They are, maybe the, the organizations the organization that they are, in, they are in have never raised their salaries. Yeah. Yeah. They are being paid less than what they deserve. But that does not mean they're not working as hard and that does not mean they don't deserve this um, uh, money, but you just need to, you know, explain yourself. Mm -hmm. Honesty is always the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. You know, talking of money, there's also another question here on uh, salary expectation. Um, what would be the best response to that question when mm -hmm. you ask to give a uh, salary expectation? Right. So I've actually done so many videos in my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and 
there are more detail and I would add someone to just go to my YouTube ch channel yeah. and check. But uh, by and large, when you're answering this question, for you to answer this question effectively, number one, you must have done your research. So for that organization that you're going to, if you can have a rough idea, it's always good. And, and you know, you can ask around. It's very easy for you to get that information. Because if a job, if the range of, of a particular job is like maybe 100 to 200, mm. if you go in and ask for 500, mm. ridiculous. Mm. If you go in and ask for 10,000, error. Yeah. So you need to go in with a rough idea. They probably have lost jobs because they've not done research. Mm -hmm. So you're probably good and then you give a number and it's done. Uh, the people who've been undercut, you go in, you, you've not done your research, uh, you ask for 40,000, they give you 40,000. When you enter, you realize mm -hmm. the cleaner earns 50K. Mm -hmm. The driver earns 80. Mm -hmm. And you, you ask for, no, what will you do? And you've already signed the contract and they didn't put a gun on your head. You've already been undercut. So it's really good to go in with the number. And then also when they ask, so what is your salary expectation? Always throw that question back to them and tell them. Um, because for any every job that is advertised, already the hiring manager has a budget. Do you mind telling me what that budget is? Okay. And if they still throw it back to them, always give a number, and then but a number that you can negotiate. So if you want to go home with, let's say, you know, uh, 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 50,000, um, net for example you see you cannot say your expectation your expected salary is 50 because mm -hmm. most of the time they, they're going to take it as fifty thousand gross mm -hmm. so what you're going to go home with hey yeah and there are people who they in their heads when they are negotiating they thought it's when you're saying 50, 50 it was it's what is home. going to get into my account yeah. and you wait and you're paid and you go to their account it's and you want to to cry yes yeah <laughs> So, yeah. so you have to do your research, um, you have to learn, and, and again, that, that's where a career coach would come in. How do you negotiate for your salary? Because there are people who cannot, don't know how to negotiate for their salary. For them, it's like almost a taboo. So they will say, me, give me anything, mm. anything you give me, I'm going to take. take. And you know, they're, they're going to give you anything. Bad mistake. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Joanne. We are moving on swiftly, and now we are on uh, social media use. We have been informed, or rather warned. You've said, you know, a lot has changed in the professional world, in the career world. There's been a lot of digital migration in Kenya. I think we have, we have, we have about 21 million users, internet users in mm -hmm. Kenya, for instance. Now we've been, we, we have been forewarned that sometimes uh, potential employers, they also check our social media mm. use. Mm. So how do you differentiate, how do you distinguish your personal and professional use of social media in a manner that it will not impact you know, future uh, job expectations? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, truth of the matter is that people have lost jobs because of what they've posted on social media. So you want to be very careful about the, you know, even the photos you put out, um, especially if your profile is public. Mm. When you when, when you get a job in a certain organization, you want to be very careful and ask yourself, do I really want to add my boss on my Facebook? You can because what you can do is actually you can create a, a new Facebook page that is for is you know for people at work and all that, yeah. oh. and then have your personal because then there are people who also really love social media and will post a lot of things. Um, but then some of those things can come and, and, and bite you in the end. And there are people, and as I said before, there are people who've lost jobs because of what they posted a tweet, you know, many years ago. Maybe they insulted someone. Maybe they were caught, you know, you know how people engage in, in, the, in, in the crossfires. So someone will just go and take a screenshot and send to, like, you know, a, like a HR person. So it's, uh, of course, it's to be very careful. Set your accounts in in private mode um, um, so that then people are not doing then also you're very intentional about what you are posting and, and you know anything that you're engaging uh, in online because it can it can come to bite you to bite you yeah my goodness I can see we are being the producer is telling us we have <laughs> a few minutes to go mm -hmm. 
but uh, I believe we can do maybe two or three questions before we wind up. Let's talk about side hustles. Yeah, <laughs> I've right. realized that a side hustle can have an even a side hustle can have another side hustle <laughs> <laughs> with another side hustle, another side hustle. Yeah. yeah, Where do you draw the line? How can you juggle? You know, like your main gig and the side hustle. How? When do you know that now it's time to move, completely move? Mm. You know, to your side hustle and quit. Say if you incorporate, how do you? When do you know? Um, it's time to jump ship. Mm. Yeah. So I, I might not be the the best person mm -hmm. um, to, to to answer this. So I've, I've actually never done it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was employed, I was employed. I, I, I think I don't know. Maybe it's a person. My personality. I'm not. I'm, I'm never able to do two things mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but you know the people I've had. You know they say, um, uh, and I think also more especially like now. Yeah. When the environment is is. Um, we are living in very hard times. Uh, life is very difficult, so you always want to have an uh, an, an extra source of income, um, and then you know anything can happen. So having that side hustle, even if you're selling maharagwe and dengus or you know mtumba or writing, whatever it is, but if you're getting supplementary income, it's always a good idea. Like now, for example, I yeah. I, I personally there's you know there's this yeah, also like the next side, this side hustle. Yeah. Um, but what is important is, of course, like number one, that you don't let it mm. uh, interfere with the work that you're doing. So then you end up losing both, mm. Mm. Be, which is like very possible. I know of someone who was hired from a very high position because, you know, co I keep saying, and I've said this on my Instagram many times, your co-workers are not your friends. Mm. Ah. Mm. Those mm. ones who say we are family or For someone really? is going to come and take a video of you in your side hustle with your meat. You metoka ile base day to aja umeenda kununua nyama yako. Bama. Bas metoka bama na manyama. Umeenda butcher. Someone has come they've taken a video of you and they have shared with your boss because then you you took you said that uh, you took sick off. Ah, eh hey, sick off. Mhm. Mm eh uh, so be very careful. People have like people have like lost their jobs uh, because now you see you cannot. Can you deny a video? No. You cannot. Like you cannot deny a video. Mm -hmm. So so uh, you know like so you you want to be very careful. Also like you know you want to be if you're doing the side hustle, like when you go to work, that's not the time to go and open your heart and tell everyone what you know all your business, what you're doing, where you live. How much? You but know, we spend so much time with our coworkers. It, it's true, but then you need to learn boundaries. Okay. Um, that this is what I'm going to share, and this is what I'm, I'm not going to share. There are always exceptions to the rule. Mm. There are always exceptions to the rule, but by and large, uh, be someone who has boundaries when it comes to how you relate with your coworkers and the kind of, especially the kind of information that you share. So think about the side hustle. Um, you know, I, I, I'm assuming because the, then for, for most people, you're spending so much time at work, so you probably hired someone. So even the person that you hire, you, you, it, it has got to be someone that you trust so that then they give you peace of mind mm -hmm. when you're working. Just the same way, if you have a good nanny, you're able to flourish because you're not thinking that my child is being abused or they're not eating, they're, you know, they're not being fed well, etc. Um, but yes, I mean, uh, people uh, thrive off of the, the side hustle and then also it just gives you that Piece of mind that if something happens to, mm -hmm. to your main job, yeah. you can always transition. Mm. Mm. Looks like our time is up, but we cannot ask you about uh, where we where you'd be found, say, on a Saturday morning at 11. Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. At 11 a.m. <laughs> um, most of the time, yeah. I think I'd be with my kids. If I'm not, you know, if I don't have a session, um, a working session, um, but it's, it's most of the time it's either I'm with my kids or I'm working. Uh, sometimes maybe making my hair. Yeah. What do you do for, you know, to, to relax, to chill? <laughs> <laughs> or you just have so, winter next door? You golf? Uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I happen to have two very active under, under threes. <laughs> it's enough so you can out. imagine, it's, first of all, it's enough workout. Um, uh, so, so, so I, I don't have the luxury right now of, 
you know, a, a, of a lot of extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, uh, right now I'm currently expecting, so also that like li mm -hmm. really limits. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I love th some of the things I, you know, I love to do is I love exercise. I, I, I love being outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anything to do with exercise, I love doing. Um, I love, I love reading. Um, I love reading a lot. And but then most I think most of the time you just find me with my kids. <laughs> Let me just say the truth. <laughs> yeah, because then most of the time I'm working. So any any spare time I have, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely I'm, Sp I'm spending bonding with them. Kids. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So on the fifth of November, um, I have an event. Uh, it's called the Wholesome Winning Working Woman. It's going to be at Kempinski between nine to one. PM. It's basically um, an event for women. We are trying to level up for 2023 in terms of our mental health, our physical health, our careers, um, and even our money. So I would really encourage um, all the women to, to sign up. Uh, we have an early bird ticket, so they really want to take advantage of that. Thanks so much, Joan. You're welcome. Asante Sana for inspiring us with the, your skills. And I believe that even you, who is watching and listening to us from different parts of the, of the world, actually, I'm told we are even being watched from Jamaica. Thank you so much for keeping it here and for keeping it as standard. This is a show, as I had mentioned, the show that uh, connects you to the right people you need to meet in this industry. The show that empowers you with influential uh, stories and women. And of course, the show that influences the way you think uh, the way you want to lead your life. We are very excited that you could keep it here. Unfortunately, we were, we've not been able, because of time, we've not been able to answer all your questions. But we can keep it uh, Katie and home. You can talk to me at Quintambori. You can also reach uh, Joanne, the career coach, on her socials for you, those questions that we've not been able to tackle. Uh, to keep up with the, some of our past uh, interviews, some of the women you need to know in this industry, in this country, uh, you need to log on to our YouTube channel at KTN Home and you'll be able to find all of, all the shows, all the women and the amazing stories right there. Well, that's it from us here at KTN Home on her standards. There's a team that you can actually not see because they're working very hard behind the scenes. I can see them waving right now. We want to say Asanteni Sana for keeping it her standards. We see you next time. <laughs>